Welcome, welcome to Kingdom Principles. Oh, welcome, welcome to Kingdom Principles. Hello, Kingdom Royals, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Princess Olavumi. I am your host. This is Kingdom Principles. On today's episode, we are going to be talking about sex before marriage. Yeah, <laughs> there are certain things that I just felt like among the Christian youth had to be no-brainers. However, going to a bunch of youth programs since I've been tagged or labeled a youth with this same question constantly being asked it's evident that it is a question in which a lot of people need clarity a lot of people want clarity so i am here to provide the little bit of clarity that i can as it relates to this topic thank you for watching stay tuned Alright, so on today's episode, as I mentioned earlier, we are talking about sex before marriage. Before we, we, we go into the segments, before we go into our segments, we want to pray um, to ensure that as I am speaking, we are receiving and as even when it's time for us to speak, I am willing to receive. So let's just pray. In Jesus' name. Father Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for everything you've done in our lives. Glory and adoration be to your holy name in Jesus' name. Father, as we're about to dial into this topic, to look at your principle as it relates to sex before marriage and being honorable before you, Father Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you'll speak through us and minister through us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, to start off, we have our, first of all, we have my trusty tablet, of course, has all my notes on it. And um, so we have a text. So our text for today will be 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Once again, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Uh, so as I mentioned in my previous videos, when I read texts, I'm going to read them in King James and I've also added ESV to it as well to, to give it like more meaning and understanding. So 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18 in KJV says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. In ESV, same Bible passage says, Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. So we're first going to look at definitions here before we, we talk too much about this. So definition, the definition of fornication is sexual intercourse between people not married to each other. And definition of sexual immorality is sexual um it is essentially the engagement in sexual acts outside the sanctity of marriage so they both essentially made the same thing having sex without being married having sex before marriage which is essentially our topic before i go into the topic because we're going to have another one of those conversations kind of like what we had last week except number one i promise you i'm not going to be half as <laughs> ginger as i was last week last week was passion if anybody was offended by the way i carried out um a lot of things i said last week please forgive me i am sorry i did not mean to offend anybody um 
it was just really me trying to say my part and express myself um so we're just going to look at these bible foundations and then we're going to go into this conversation so um, other bible passages about sexual immorality can be found in the same first corinthians chapter 6 is that from 18 to 20 so we're going to go from verse 19 um uh, after he said we should um every that sexual fornication is a sin against our own body it says what know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you which ye have and um which ye have of god and not your own verse 20 for ye are bought with the price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's uh first corinthians in esv um, verse 19 sorry, sorry verse 18 it says or do you not know that your body is a temple of the holy spirit within you whom you have from god you are not your own for you were bought with the price so glorify god in your body then first corinthians 7 2 says nevertheless to avoid fornication let every man have his own wife and let everyone have her own husband esv says but because of the temptation of sexual immor immorality each man should have his own wife each woman her own husband okay so we have looked at our foundation so we're going to do what put the tablet aside i'm just going to have a proper youthful conversation with ourselves so based off of the bible passages that we've read it is evident that the bible is telling us that we're not supposed to have sex outside the sanctity of marriage now i'm going to um say this so i know people i have people in my life who have had sex before marriage and even have a child and they're not married and i know people in my life who have just had sex before marriage but they have not had any children i need you to realize that i am not judging you i'm just telling you what the bible says i am talking to the born again youth among us who you know we know the lord but we keep asking these questions as if god's standards are going to change a couple of weeks ago um a nigerian comedian he's known as i believe wole arole he tweeted i think this was my first week of january he said if you have sex before marriage or he said sex before marriage is a sin that's what he said and everybody took it it blew up how do you mean yeah 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 blah 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 i had i'm reading i didn't really read into it but i was looking into comments and such and such and such and i was so confused because i was like how are you why like why why is this even debatable it's evidently stated in the bible that if you decide to sleep with somebody this is an act with like you against your own body whether you believe it or not when you sleep with somebody eh, fluids are being transmitted so even biologically as spiritually when you have sex with per with a person you are becoming one with that person the bible furthermore says and i'll put this on the screen that the man that has sex with a harlot becomes one with that harlot okay so to those of you who have multiple sex partners may the lord be with you your family members and your destiny thanks and i'm not and, and, and i'm not trying to be offensive i'm just saying the truth you're not supposed to be sleeping around now to the wonderful people that say this thing that i find very stupid they say um if i don't have sex with her then how am i going to know that she's good in bed if i don't have sex with him how am i supposed to know he's good in bed okay i'm gonna explain this the way that somebody so a man of god that i respect so much said it he said see when god created relationships and eh, he created um, the concept that people on that in, within the sanctity of marriage are supposed to get to know themselves by themselves just within within like themselves they're just supposed to get to know themselves by themselves so whatever pleasures that person's spouse like whether male or female it is in that state of marriage that you know that this style or this thing or this thing works so what where we are all getting it wrong in this generation is that we're already sexually active at young ages now a person that has had sex already 
yeah, can still be sexually pure before they get married if they de decide to practice celibacy. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that again. So if you've already had sex with somebody, you can still be sexually pure if you decide to practice celibacy, in which case you are still seen as sexually pure before God. So you understand. But sex before marriage is a sin. It's a sin. It's not supposed to be something that is heard of. The reason why this thing is a problem, the reason why we will have youth of our generation talking to each other and telling of us talking to each other and saying, how am I going to know she's good or she's not good in bed? Is because you have already tasted the forbidden foods. You've already had sex with somebody in the past. And it, the reason, because you've had sex, that's how you know how, quote and unquote, superior sex is to the person that you're supposed to be in a relationship with but that's not how god ordained it god ordained it that you'll be in a relationship and you will sleep for the first time with the person that you are met to the person he has designed designed for you and you guys will figure out what pleasures each other together that's how it's supposed to be now in a situation whereby you didn't lose your virginity of your own free will for example a person that was raped at a young age or sexually abused and sexually molested we're going to talk about that on this channel i as this channel progresses i told you guys in the first video that we were going to talk about heated topics that affect the youth we're going to talk about sexual abuse we're going to talk about molestation on this channel okay so just stay tuned for that and i'll break down certain things as relates to that if you have been abused first of all i'm going to tell you that you you are not alone hmm? and god cares about you god said it in the book of deuteronomy um i don't know the bible passage right now but i'll put it on the screen i read it in my in the course of studying for this for this um um program for this episode in the book of Deuteronomy, God put clearly stated a man that rapes a woman, the, the consequences that should be there. Yeah, God put it there. So God is not for rape in any way, shape, or form. So if the reason why you're 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 you've had sex before marriage is because you were raped as a child, I pray that God heals you. God is not judging you. Let me be the first person to tell you, it is not your fault. I will talk about this more in the episode but it's not your fault okay it's not your fault what happened to you happened to you and it's unfortunate but you're not a victim you're a victor okay you your god's going to help you out of it if you want more um advice on 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 this topic you can feel free to contact me i'll share a bit of my story as well when that time comes and so feel free to contact me and i'll talk to you a bit more but if that is the reason why you lost your virginity or why you had sex before marriage and that is not your fault okay i'm talking about people that really willfully decide of their own volition that i'm going to have sex before marriage i've listened to about three youtubers now who have explained their how they lost their virginity and at the end of these three youtubers story times okay three or two maybe two if i can remember right now off the top of my head two out of the two of them they both stated clearly just wait before wait till you get married they both stated clearly they both lost their virginity to their boyfriends and they both said how it was not a pleasant it wasn't a pleasant experience now if you've lost your virginity to your boyfriend and it was a pleasant experience i'm happy for you and your family members but what i just want to know is why why do we willfully as youth quote unquote christian youth why are we trying to justify what god has already said is wrong what god has already said is a sin the bible says in the book of um in the book of hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 it says marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled that's hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 yeah i wasn't going to read that bible passage but i think i right. need to so based off of that bible passage it says that marriage is honorable when the bed is undefiled it, another way of looking at it is when you have not slept with that person that is how mar your marriage is honorable unto God. My question to you now is, please, why would you not want your marriage to be honorable? I'm curious. Next week, we're going to be talking about 
godly relationships and the, and the and the pros of godly relationships so stay tuned for that but i just want to know why you don't want your marriage to be honorable because me as i did so here eh, my own marriage it must be honorable in jesus if it's not honorable i don't want it i don't the bible says marriage is honorable with the bed undefiled meaning when you guys have not slept with each other and please so all these questions that i'm asking i am genuinely curious so please put it in the comment section why are y'all sleeping together before you're getting married i want to know when evidently it says in the bible that we should not sex is a sin against your own body why is this a thing of pride for both males and females to have a body count of 10 15 or even 5 why why can't we wait before marriage Number one problem that I see is kind of bouncing off of last week's topic. One of the number one problems that I'm seeing is the fact that remember we're not waiting on God before we enter these relationships. So because we oti wawala toke, that's what you're about to say. It has been slanted from the beginning. We're as from the beginning, we're not already following God's statutes and standards. So obviously because it is not straight from the beginning it will just go down like that just not being straight so because we are not asking god before we enter these relationships that is why we're allowing sex to enter these these relationships and that is why where we're finding ourselves where we are today do you genuinely think that it was god's plan that people will be having baby mamas and baby daddies you genuinely think it was god's plan please where in the bible did you see it i'm curious it was God's plan, that it was God's plan that you have baby mommies and baby daddies. I want to know, please, if you saw it, please just put it, because I might not have read, you see, I might not have read that bit in the Bible. I'm just curious. So all I'm going to tell us is, see, marriage, sex before marriage is a sin, okay? If you want your, 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 your marriage to be honorable, then you would then you need to then okay let's try this again if you want a marriage to be honorable then don't have sex before you get married a quick word to those people that are saying before you buy a car you test drive it so before i decide to marry her i i, I let me quote and unquote though, try it out okay so what I have to say to that is, first and foremost, I find it very rude and disrespectful and derogatory that you you would equate a human being with a machine, with a car. That's disrespectful. But hey, we move. Number two, my number two thing as it relates to that is, it's not every car that you want to buy that you can test drive. The high-end car, Sherry, Obamor, uh, Bentley, Ferrari, even the Maserati. See that song Maserati that you people all sing up and down. Even Maserati, when you want to buy it, you can't just test drive it. Yes, I know that there are places whereby you can drive around like a luxurious car for like a day and stuff. I know those places exist, but I'm saying you want to go to a dealership to buy a Maserati or a Bentley or or a Ferrari or any of these high end or a Rolls Royce. Yes, any of these high end cars, you are not allowed to test drive it before you before you 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 buy them you go to those stores with your money knowing that you are going to buy it so tell yourself dear lady tell yourself tell dear man i am not a cheap car Maybe they've decided to equate us to a car already it's okay i am not just a car that can be used and dumped tell yourself i i love me i am not a just a person that can be used and dumped remember last week i told you guys your heart is valuable your heart is too valuable then to be broken by one piece of garbage anywhere if it comes in the form of a demon a man anything your heart is too valuable sure you get so this this um word of affirmation that we give ourselves today is i am not useless i cannot just be used and dumb i am a high value car it, whatever you, you i mean for like me i'll call myself a rose race i'll call myself a bensley i am of high value and high status so you cannot just use me and dump me you cannot just test me and go have you not noticed that all these guys are saying oh i will marry you if you just have sex with me they end up not marrying these women 
people of God, their sisters, their but let's use sense. Hey, John, to you know, let's use sense. I'm begging us, please. Let's use sense, please. Let's look at. I mean, I study a bit of psychology, so when I look at things, I look at them from a psychoanalytical um lens and i know i just confuse some people so essentially i look at psychology i look at a psychology um concept of it i look at the biblical concept of it and i analyze that's just how i um think and so there's a lot of like psychology as like emotional um psychology emu emotional abuse that comes in a lot of relationships but your your virginity is a part of your value now again if you have been raped you can still be sexually pure okay that is still very much possible because if god sees you as pure then nobody cares who doesn't okay but god did not organize um us organize sex outside of marriage when we now have sex outside of marriage or even in you are married you now have multiple uh, um sex partners that's where you see diseases like rape i'm sorry diseases like aids coming in or or um um stds that's why you see them why because that's not how god ordained that's not what sex was created for remember again i believe last week was when i was telling you guys that when god creates something for a purpose and that thing or we decide to use that thing for what god did not create it for there are repercussions remember i told you that that's what's going on AIDS is going on we have AIDS out there and really people that have multiple sex partners um it started i believe they said with the gay community but people that have that jump from one sex partner to the other to the other what happens stds number two what happens is aids and then that might even affect you going forward another thing that might happen is unwanted pregnancy change your understanding so when you're using what god created uh, as as a thing of pleasure within marriage outside of the context of marriages marriage then prepare to see the consequences so you know that condom 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 does not stop you against stds it doesn't stop you from receiving stds or aids or I, and truthfully i've heard stories of where condom did not even stop pregnancy gossip blah, blah. so condoms are just like they're they're not all the way completely used Useful. why would you want to put, I, uh, put yourself on on such an edge i was watching a video of a youtuber i'm not subscribed to her i just saw the video and i don't know why i clicked it and the lady was talking about she i think she put in like a birth prevention thing and i watched the video and i saw how this woman this young lady i believe we're the same age or maybe i'm a I'm older um she was going through pain because she was putting something in her so that she could have her multiple sex partners and and she wouldn't get pregnant and I watched this video and I was like I don't know what's going on with you this generation and she I don't know if she's born again or not I don't know I know she comes from a Christian background from the get to know her video that I watched so I know she comes from a Christian background but guys the consequences of disobedience aka STDs aka AIDS aka unwanted pregnancy those that's that's what a lot of us are seeing in our generation that's why you see baby daddy do you have three baby daddies you have your is that is that what God ordained look please let us sit down and deep what are the things that we want before we decide to have sex with somebody so step number one please before you enter a relationship all in all pray we've already spoken about that last week number two please don't have sex with before marriage because there are so many things that can come out of it of course if you get pregnant and you, you are with a supportive person that's ready to you know do their duties and responsibilities in raising up that child that's wonderful i've seen one I've, there's a wonderful story it came in the form of a movie of a woman she was engaged to get married but she ended up you know having sex with somebody else of course i was still outside of marriage as she had been for this person this man was now a married man and at the end of the day like she had to do the needful and the needful was she had to cut all ties with the father of the baby but the father of the baby still took care of the child and god blessed her god blessed her with an amazing man and she still got married sure you understand and 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 to those that are saying i want to address this next week but to those that are saying that marriage is nothing but just a piece of paper 
the only reason why you think that is because you are not looking at marriage the way from god's standpoint and you're not looking at marriage the way god wants it to be seen if you have god in that marriage it's not just a piece of paper it's a covenant and god does not take likely to covenant being broken um so that's all i have to say today i hope that i my, I sorted out everything as it resulted to the concept of sex before marriage. Remember, you're not a cheap car. You're not just a cheap thing that can be used and thrown away. Okay, you're not. And if you have Jaja had sex before marriage, you can still be pure, and, and and you can still be you know um sexually pure through you know the redemption of 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 God the Father. You can still be pure okay so don't worry about that god still got you you can still be pure if you were raped and that is how and why you lost your virginity god has not thrown you away you're not a disappointment to your father god still loves you and he's there with open arms to to be there for you okay and if another situation is uh, the, you were raped and that rape incident ended up in having a baby first and foremost i want you to know that you are a very very strong Woman. you're a very strong woman and god will bless you okay god will bless you god will stand by you he will give you the strength that you need god he will be there for you he's there with open arms he's got you he's got you he will never leave you he will never forsake you because he's your father he's got you just know that okay just know that he's got you you're a very very strong woman of course i know that men can be raped too i know that it has happened while i was in school i studied criminology that was my mind on before i changed and so i know that men can be uh, are raped too and i want to tell you dear young boy dear young man out there that you're watching me that i know what happened to you was not right i know that what happened to you was a violation to you but god can still heal you okay God still got you. As this channel progresses, I will tell you my story. I promise. But God still got you. As a man, you were you 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 were you, you were humiliated uh, because uh, somebody raped you. And older, whether it was a male or female, they raped you. God loves you. Jesus loves you. Okay, and He's there for you with open arms to receive you. Accept His invitation today. Um, I'm going to use this opportunity to to pray for anybody that is hurting. You might not have wanted to lose your opportunity, but it was first forcefully taken away from you. I'm going to pray for you, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I commit your children into your hands. That they've been broken, they've been battered. That is somebody forcefully took from them what they intended to keep. That they please have mercy that they please raise your children up again and heal them that they stand by them and stand with them give them the courage give them the grace give them the backup that they need in the mighty name of jesus father lord stand by them that they heal them emotionally heal them mentally that they stand with them in the mighty name of jesus Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Number two person that I want to pray for, or group of people I want to pray for, you already had sex before you got married. You didn't know that it was a sin. You didn't know it's against God's will. And you want to ask God for mercy and you want to make amends. Um, what I will first advise you to do is pray about that relationship. Is that relationship what God wants for you? Again, we're going to talk about godly relationships next week. So maybe. I, I'm not going to say you should wait till next week though. I'm going to say pray to your heavenly father. Daddy in heaven, is this the relationship you want for me? And if it is not the relationship God wants for you, please break it off. Please break it off. Because the relationship God has for you will give you peace. The relationship God has for you will not go against God's values and standards for your life. So please, if that's all the relationship God has for you, break it off. Just break it off. He'll give you the grace to break it off. But just pray, okay? Ask God for forgiveness because you did sin by having sex before marriage that's not what god or they did for so ask god for forgiveness number one number two ask god lord is this is a relationship for me to be in and if it is he will teach you what to do if it isn't please break it off okay and god will stand by you and stand with you as you do so so let's pray father lord i bring your children before you that 
they've seen you know you said in your word that we have all sinned and fallen short of your glory they've sinned you said in your word daddy that if we confess our sins you are faithful and just to forgive us that all our sins and trespasses so these your children have come before you daddy and and we are and we are coming together you know your children and we're asking for forgiveness that they on their behalf that the lord we pray in the mighty Lord, just have mercy you said the prayer of mercy is mercy is a prayer you never neglect have mercy upon your children and forgive them whatever instructions that you give them father lord give them the grace to be able to carry them out in the mighty name of jesus thank you heavenly father for in jesus name we pray amen and number three you've heard what i've had to say today and you want to give your life to christ um you you maybe you've had sex for marriage already or not you, it's just a mindset for you and you want a change of heart let's pray in jesus name daddy i bring your children before you they are ready to become your sons and your daughters maybe daddy what they have heard before now the doctors they have heard before now are very different from your word and your standards father we bring them before you daddy and we pray lord that you receive them Repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me all my sins and trespasses. Write my name, Daddy, in your book of life, in the mighty name of Jesus. The journey that I've started, Father, please don't let me return back to perdition, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, Lord, these are your children. Even if it's just one child that are coming before you, Daddy, they said they want to be a part of your kingdom. They want to be kingdom royals, Daddy. They want to be children of the King of Kings. Daddy, pack them up in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, receive them as your own in the mighty name of Jesus. Forgive them all their sins and trespasses. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, to you that just gave your life to Christ, congratulations. You are now a daughter. You are now the daughter and or the son of a king. Jesus loves you. And you are now a joint heir with Christ. So, welcome. Welcome, dear kingdom. Well, I will give you a hug, but I can't. But precious. <laughs> welcome 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 to god's kingdom welcome to being a kingdom royal now the next step is to find a bible believing church now i know we're in the middle of a pandemic and that might not be easy but a lot of churches are doing online services if you need help if you're within my area i know you won't know whether you're within my area or not but if if you would need um help and support concerning finding a bible believing church within your area Put it in the comment section. If not, my social media handles are below. Uh, contact me on any one of the social media handles that you have. Send me a DM and I'll try my best to help you or I will tell my parents. And my parents will try and work together to get a Bible-believing church for you. All right? Thank you for watching. To all my fellow other Kingdom Royals, thank you for watching. God bless you. I hope that you are blessed by this uh, little word of mine. If you have anything to add or subtract, the comment section will forever always be open for discussion. And um, just ensure that you are respectful when putting it up down there. All right. God bless you all. Thank you for watching. I remember, do not lose your salvation because that is your ticket into God's kingdom. God bless you. Bye. Next time on Kingdom Principles. One thing that I've been taught by my mom is the difference between submission and stupidity. Um, and I think the reason why maybe there's such a rot as it, relates, it, it, as it relates to submission within our generation is we are scared of allowing ourselves to be stupid. Um, and I feel like if you are submitting to the man that God gave you, then you are submitting to God.